Oh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. I, I apologise if what I have to say might seem to be rather incoherent. Uh, these are more reflections that I'm offering rather than uh, fixed opinions. I've been giving a lot of thought to what's happening around the revelations about Hunter Biden and his father and how all this relates to the Communist Party of China. I've had to revise my stance on things relating to China throughout this year. My attitude towards China has been conditioned by an opposition to the American empire. I had bought into a vision of a multipolar world where nobody dominates and countries followed their own national self-interest rather than a globalist new world order. And this always involved kind of the defeat of the, um, the pet petrodollar. Uh, so to this day, I hold more or less to a vision that Putin and Russia do not pose a great threat, or at least not an ex existential one, to the rest of the world, except maybe uh, to American hegemony. As part of this, I kind of went along with an ill-thought-out version vision of China as also not being much of a threat. After all, the People's Republic of China is surrounded by American military bases, and certainly in their mind, the Americans do pose an existential threat to China. And uh, all of this is correct, and it's shown quite well in John Pilger's documentary, uh, The War on China. When the CEO of Huawei in Canada was arrested last year, uh, which set off this latest round of conflict with China, I had to buy a new cell phone. And back then I decided to buy a Huawei out of some sense of solidarity. Um, it was also the cheapest. <laughs> uh, I've come a long way in the month since then. And there are two things that have helped me to change my mind and to realize that China does in fact pose a as dire a threat to the world as America does, or at least did. Firstly, I came across material on what was termed the Chinese takeaway, takeover of Australia and New Zealand. I could find little to counter uh, the arguments in the book I was reading, except for the fact that it adopted what I saw as a dualistic position in which uh, China was all bad and America was all good, uh, which I couldn't go along with and still can't. The second was learning what I now believe to be uh, true about the role of the Chinese Communist Party, and I have to say part of the American deep state, in the creation and spread of the no novel coronavirus. Having looked at the information and evidence, I now have little difficulty in accepting that this was a bioweapon created in the Wuhan um, Bioweapons Laboratory, released either accidentally or on purpose uh, by the Chinese Communist Party. Also, after four years of Russiagate and similar shenanigans from the Democrat Party, not to mention the events of the past few months, the rioting, and looting, etc. I've been able to make up my mind as to who is more or less honest and who's lying through their teeth. Am I a supporter of Trump or of MAGA? Do we think that we're going to make America great again? Do I think Donald Trump is a good president of the United States? No, I do not. He's a foul-mouthed narcissist with an authoritarian bent who is, at the very least, guilty of nepotism. But is he a dictator who has done untold harm to the United States? I think not. Rather, he's a representation of where America is at the moment. So he's no dictator because he has been completely neutralised by the deep state to the extent now that the only thing that he can dictate it's what he has for breakfast that day and what he's going to tweet. 
No, he's been neutralised and has had no power to bring home the troops or to drain the swamp. Uh, and I believe that this might have been the case since sometime in 2017. Rick Wiles of True News says that he regard, regarded Donald Trump as a doorstop against the unspeakable evil that we are witnessing today. And I think he's probably right. There is a rot that they describe so well that goes so deep that Jeffrey Epstein and then Ghislaine Maxwell can be arrested for trafficking young girls and nothing ever happens. So this is because the whole of Washington is compromised by a Mossad blackmail operation. Democrats and Republicans, all of them, are, so they will do anything to protect themselves and ensure that they are not unmasked, so nothing ever happens. And I think we will find that something like this is playing out here and that the Chinese Communist Party is taking advantage of uh, chaos in American elections and has access to all the material that the New York Post is talking about. The emails, the dirty pictures, and are using that material to get exactly what they want from a Biden administration. So we've got another blackmail operation going on, and Biden is quite happy to give the Chinese Communist Party its, its due. China is going to eat our lunch? Come on, man. I mean, I, you know, they're not bad folks, folks. But guess what? They're not a they're, they're not, not a competition for us. So we reach the point where it seems that America is being sold out in plain sight that there are traitors in Washington, and one of them at least standing for president. And all of this is being allowed to happen across the board from the Democrats to the media and also now to the Republicans. They all have too much to lose. Personally for me, as far as the future of the Constitutional Republic is concerned, the misdemeanors, and they are many, uh, of Donald Trump pale into insignificance against what the Democrats are doing and how all of this is now being covered up. So now let's get to the material and look at a few excerpts from an interviewer, from an interview uh, by a wet behind the ears, an extremely disrespectful young journalist from the Daily Caller, uh, the newspaper that was established by Duck Tucker Carlson, who it seems to me is almost the sole establishment voice who is talking about all of this. And then we'll follow that up with something from a Chinese whistleblower um, that I believe is uh, linked to uh, Steve Bannon um, and, uh, and others. Uh, that seems to me to be a bit of a bombshell, but there's something that I've hardly seen anywhere else. Okay. The FBI uh, took it. The FBI agent told the FBI agent he was afraid. He was afraid of consequences. From so the he Biden. didn't, this, this, this man, he didn't give you guys the copy of the hard drive and pass over the actual hard drive to the FBI? No, he gave the FBI time. first. Okay. And he waited four or five months. Why do you think he held on to it? Well, he held on to four, he held on to forged copies of it. He gave two to friends of his in case he was killed. <laughs> and he was, and he, uh, don't laugh. People, people Serious, get, yeah. This, this is the presidency is at stake here. And we have some very dangerous people involved. Fair. Uh, you know, photographs, what, what the New York Post published, another criticism that people on the internet have levied is that the, the metadata pulled from those images at the upload don't exactly square with each other. It, it would appear that some are the native files, some are copies created by the New York Post. Is it, <laughs> did you turn over different files to the New York Post? or Turned over exactly what I had, and they've been copied four or five times. Yes, it isn't the original. The FBI has the original. Right. So, I mean, all they're saying is the obvious. I mean, well, the was, metadata would still match if it's a copy of the hard drive. Oh, come on. No? This is petty fogging nonsense. Well, the reason I, I mean, the, 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 the main thing is 
that it, I mean, we, we can deal with the process all you want, mm -hmm. but nobody dealt with the process when they stole Donald Trump's tax returns mm -hmm. and published it without verifying anything. And they didn't even have a, 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 a they don't even have an unnamed source for it. The New York Times just published it. They even said we have an unnamed source. So what's, look, I've been doing this for 50 years. Right. So I can assure you this is perfectly legal. And this is his uh, hard drive. His lawyer called this guy the day it came out. That's about the best verification you can have for it. He said, do you have Hunter Biden's drive? I'm not sure what the source said, but I have the, I have the email of that. So his lawyer thinks it's his. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is a lot of crap that it isn't his. Of course it's his. And I, as I said, they haven't denied it. I don't let them deny specific ones. We're going to put them out. Let them, let them say that the, the text from, from Hunter Biden to his daughter, saying that for the last 30 years, Hunter Biden has been supporting the family and that the father requires him to kick back 50% of his salary to the vice president. Let them say that's not true. And then let's go look at how Joe has these million dollar, multi-million dollar houses, and he's never made more than 150,000. Hmm. Everybody's always wondered, gee, how does Joe have these houses? I'll tell you how he has the houses. The bribe money that Joe's been collecting for 30 years goes to his brother, and it goes to his son, and they kick back 50% to him, and they cover all his bills, which is a, really a Chinese method of corruption which is documented in the book by Schweiker, uh, Secret, Ep Secret Empires, Chapter 1. He describes how Americans like him, John Kerry, the Clintons, adopted this Chinese method of take the money in, have your expenses taken care of, kind of the way Al Sharpton lives. Take, uh, have, have the money taken in. They pay for everything. I mean, do you know that Hunter Biden paid for his stepdaughter's entire, uh, I mean, half-sister's entire education? No, why wouldn't Joe Biden pay for that education? I mean, I, I think the, the question is, we don't know that yet. So why, when are we going to get to see? Well, you'll get to see it, but you- I mean, you're a prosecutor. We need direct evidence, right? Well, Not well, you, well, circumstantial you, evidence. Well, you already have direct evidence that you're ignoring. You have direct evidence of a, of a, of a memo that was put out, a text that was put out mm -hmm. that says specifically, I have to, I, I have to, um, all during the time that I uh, been disrespected, says Hunter Biden to his daughter, I've been the one who supported this family for 30 years. And unlike, uh, da unlike Pop, I'm not going to require you to give half your salary to me. I didn't write that. He did. He hasn't denied he wrote it. What does that mean? Why is a son, why is a son giving half his salary to his father? And paying all of his father's expenses, unless the son is a is a is a conduit for bribe money. Mm -hmm. We used to call him a bag man. That's exactly what he is. And, and explain to me who would hire Hunter Biden. Hunter, yeah, uh, Hunter Biden is not just unqualified; he's a stone cold drug addict. He was thrown out of the Navy three months before he got hired by the crooked Ukrainian for two million dollars a year. That's actually what he was paid: two million dollars a year. You think a the crookedest oligarch in Ukraine is going to hire a, a stumble bum drug addict to be on his board? Or do you think the more logical thing is that he was hiring the vice president who had just been put in charge of giving out all the money in the Ukraine? I think the second is much more logical than the first. Not only that, there are five witnesses that say that, hmm. that uh, nobody will bring to the United States. They're keeping them in uh, Ukraine because the inside the government is protecting Joe Biden. Shoshai
虐童的，极其让人看到完全就把中国人不当人的这个啊，这是谁拍的？中共拍的，中共拍的啊！仅是视频吗？仅是黄色吗？是不是？不止，不止，大家告诉大家啊，拜登跟啊，习王。就拜登之子啊，我说现在这所有的拜登都是拜登之子，签了一个秘密协议，里面预付款就呃签协议就给了一百万啊，就小费，后面给了一千万，牵涉四十五亿美元，四十五亿美元啊，直接把它先交到司法部啊，给美国司法部，并且。还有一份，据说啊，给到了佩洛西，据说佩给到佩洛西啊。很多人为什么给佩洛西？他们给佩洛西本来意图是，意思就是说啊，我们有你，就是因为拜登嘛，是上次啊，在民主党的大会里头，民整个民主党也要开始灭共了，大家口气很强硬了啊，然后他们着急了，就是我们一直支持你。就说白了，之前已经跟你签了一个东西，是吧？然后呢，这边意思就是说啊，你看，你别以为我们没你的东西啊，把东西给你，意思就是让你们别忘了，就后面我有你的罪证啊，你必须得赢大选，必须得赢，这、就是你不管用什么手段都要赢这个大选。否则的话啊，第第二就是赢了以后，你还得听中共的。但是到司法部这里啊，亲拜登的就把他按下来了。但是，啊，据说啊，咱们爆料革命的某位战友，把他弄到了一个很大的局。这个局很大啊，这个真的就是啊。远超过咱们的想象，这个局真的是要不仅仅是要把是要把十四亿人啊，把联合国真的是要把美国彻底，美国的总统啊，未来的哪个总统，未来多少年以后的多少任总统都是他们的，都是他们说了算。为什么？实际上就是。想拿这个东西啊，拿这个东西，其实就是两边要挟啊。但是这就阴差阳错啊，就到了川普总统手上。当然了，很多人说这个他们有没有川普总统的那个？告诉大家，川普总统肯定没有啊，因为没有跟中共。啊，有这个层面的勾兑，布伦伯格也在这个硬盘里头都有，还有包括生物武器的这个啊，第三个硬盘，第三个硬盘都在里面。这三个硬盘啊，据说啊 ，Well, you can make of that what you will. I suppose it depends on your political. Uh, position. Um, I'll just finish uh, with this. Um, this is from today. There's been a lot of controversy. There've been, of course, the liberal media. First of all, they censored it. They just ignored it, and then they said it was all because of the Russians. Uh, so now this is the latest that's come from the Gateway pundit. Pundit, I haven't really looked at this yet, but the headline is email sent to computer shop owner uh, John Paul Mac Isaac from Hunter Biden's attorney is released. So um, at least from that side of the aisle, um, it's it, it's proven. But of course, he never satisfied the other people who are trying to cover all of this up. Anyway, I'll leave it at that, and I'll put links to all the 
material I've used in the description box below. This is um, Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.